The Zones tab is where you assign points to software zones and define software zone characteristics. The AFC 50 and AFC 100 ARC100 control panels have 99 programmable software zones, while the AFC1000 has 1500 programmable software zones. Each point, such as a smoke detector, heat detector, monitor module, relay modules, I.O. circuits, and notification circuits, need to be assigned to a software zone. These software zones can represent a group of devices located in a specific physical area or they may represent a set of devices that are configured for a specific function. When the learn function is ran via the FireLearn control panel keypad, all of the points found during the learn are assigned to zone 1. When points are assigned to a zone, they work together, which means that any inputs assigned to a zone will activate the outputs in that same zone. For example, if you want a smoke detector to trigger a relay, the smoke detector and the relay need to be assigned to the same software zone. Each point on the system can be assigned to all of the software zones. This will provide a lot of programming flexibility. Looking at the Zone tab, there are four windows. I have hidden the Programming menu bar and I have also hidden the Transfers window to make more room. The window on the far left is where we can add, delete, and select the zones to be configured. The programming software will have a default of one zone. The window in the upper middle part of the screen allows us to configure zone characteristics. The window beneath that shows the points assigned to the selected zone. So for example, if you have zone 1 selected, you will see all of the points that are currently assigned to zone 1. It is also where you will drag and drop points from the points list on the right hand side to assign them to whichever zone is selected on the zones list on the left hand side. So again, the window on the far right is the points list. This will indicate all used and unused points that are currently on the system. If you upload the panel after running a learn, there will be points with functions associated with them. Points can be edited within this window, however, it is easier to edit the points in the points tab of the programming software. For example purposes, I've already created the functions and input custom names for all of my devices. When I ran the learn from the fire alarm control panel, all of the points were assigned to zone 1. So with zone 1 selected, all of the points in the system can also be found in this lower middle window because they are assigned to zone 1. If a program is started from scratch, the only points found in zone 1 will be the notification circuits and I.O. circuits on the panel. For instance, here is an example of an IPA4000 program that has been created as a new panel. You will see the NAC circuits and I.O. circuits and their default function is NAC General Purpose. Anytime you see a plus sign, you can click on it and expand it for more information. For example, click on the plus sign next to Zone 1. And it will list all of the points that are currently assigned to Zone 1. Then click on the minus sign to collapse the additional information. This also works with the points window on the right hand side. Click on the plus sign to expand for more information. And you can view every software zone that that particular point is located. For instance, Notification Appliance 1 is assigned to Zone 1. Now let's take a look at the zone characteristics, where each zone can have its own distinct settings. The first option to change is the zone name. Just double click in the field and change the zone name to whatever you would like. There are 16 characters available, and I'm going to change this to General Alarm. The next option is Style, which comes defaulted as Alarm Style. The other options available are Supervisory, Positive Alarm Sequence, Aux, Releasing, Fire Drill, Water Flow, Alert, System Alarm, System Supervisory, System Trouble, CO Alarm, and CO Supervisory. When a Style Alarm is selected and an input within that zone is active, it will generate an alarm condition at the fire alarm control panel. When a style supervisory is selected and an input within that zone is active, it will generate a supervisory condition at the fire alarm control panel. So any supervisory point, contact input tamper, or any point that has been programmed to report as a supervisory signal must have a style of supervisory. When a style positive alarm sequence is selected, 
that zone will operate under the guidelines and times for positive alarm sequence as outlined in NFPA 72. Any contact input aux point must be assigned to a zone with style aux. An aux style will generate an alarm condition at the fire alarm control panel. The next selection is releasing, which will allow you to set this zone as a releasing zone and to change the releasing characteristics of that particular zone. For instance, you will see all the releasing characteristics over on the right hand side of this area. The next style is fire drill. So in order for a fire drill to work properly, you will need to set up a fire drill zone and change the style to fire drill. Inputs do not need to be assigned to this zone since the input is the fire drill button on the front of the fire alarm control panel. However, any outputs that need to be activated during a fire drill must be assigned to this zone. The next style is water flow, which will set the zone up as a water flow zone. The style after that is a style alert which will allow this zone to be set as an alert zone anytime a contact input alert point is being used. For more information on contact input alert, please refer to the video contact input alert. A zone with the style system alarm will activate all outputs assigned to it when any alarm on the system occurs. No inputs are needed in this zone. A zone with the style system supervisory will activate all outputs assigned to it when any supervisory on the system occurs. Again, no inputs are needed in this zone. And a zone with a style system trouble will activate all outputs assigned to it when any trouble on the system occurs. Again, no inputs are needed in this zone. The last two options in style are for CO detectors. You can either choose CO alarm if you would like your CO to report as an alarm condition or choose CO Supervisory if you would like your CO detector to report to the central station as a supervisory condition. The next option in zones is alarm count. This indicates the number of inputs in a zone that need to be activated prior to the activation of any outputs in that zone. The default is 1 and you can put any number between 1 and 10. For instance, if the alarm count is 2, then two inputs will need to be active in this zone in order to activate the outputs in this zone. The next option is silenceable. The default is checked or a silenceable zone and what this means is the outputs in this zone are silenceable and they will silence when the silence button on the front of the control panel is pressed. Typically any zones with notification circuits will be programmed to be silenceable or that the box is checked. Note that any relays would be in a non-silenceable zone so that they do not reset when the panel is silenced, which means that the relays and notification circuits will typically be in separate zones. The next option is latching. This is default as checked, which means any outputs in this zone will remain active until the panel is reset. If the box is not checked or non-latching, this means that the outputs in this zone will deactivate and the condition will clear on the fire alarm control panel as soon as the input in this zone clears back to a normal state. The next option is to set the zone up to be a local only non-reporting zone. In order for the local only zone to work, the panel must now report by zone in the dialer IP reporting sections. The next option is output pattern, which refers to the pattern which will be transmitted to a circuit with a function of NAC general purpose. If you click on the down arrow, you will see your options. The default is constant, and the other options are ANSI TIMP 3, MARCH CODE, DOUBLE TIME, and ANSI TIMP 4. Again, this is for output circuits that are defined as NAC general purpose that are assigned to this zone. Day and night sensitivity refers to the smoke sensitivity of the smoke detectors. To enable day and night sensitivity, go to the sensitivity tab of the software. If day-night sensitivity is not enabled, then the day sensitivity is fouled, which is defaulted to 3.5%. This is the percent of obscuration per foot for all smoke detectors in this zone. The higher the percentage, the more smoke required to activate that detector. The sensitivity can be set anywhere between 1.1% and 3.5% for either day or night. Typically, if the day-night sensitivity is enabled, the day percentage is higher than the night percentage. Refer to the job specifications whether day-night sensitivity should be enabled.
Heat sensitivity refers to the fixed heat detector or the pad 100 HD. This is where you set the alarm threshold for the fixed heat detectors assigned to this zone. The default is 135 degrees, but it can be adjusted up to and including 185 degrees. Double click in the cell to adjust this setting. Low temp heat sensitivity adjusts the low set point on any heat detector within this zone defined to report a low temperature supervisory. You can also make heat detectors within a zone rate of rise. To do this, check mark this box and all of the heat detectors within this zone will now be rate of rise fixed temperature heat detectors. Fixed rate of rise heat sensitivity refers to the rate of rise heat detector. This is where you set the alarm threshold for the rate of rise heat detector assigned to this zone. It is defaulted to 135 degrees and can be adjusted up to and including 174 degrees. Again, just double click in the cell to adjust the setting. The auto silence timer defines the amount of time before silenceable NACs in this zone are automatically deactivated. For example, if you would like the silenceable outputs in this zone to shut off after a certain period of time, you need to double click in the space to enter a value anywhere between 0 and 360 minutes. Auto unsilence timer defines the amount of time before any silence NAC can be reactivated. Outputs will only reactivate if the panel is still an alarm. Double click in the space to enter a value anywhere between 0 and 60 minutes. Silence inhibit timer defines the amount of time before an individual will be unable to silence the control panel. Again, just double click to enter a value anywhere between 0 and 60 minutes. For example, if you did not want the control panel to be silenced for up to 2 minutes, you would put a value of 2 in this field. This will not allow the personnel to silence the control panel until that particular timer is met. Restore delay defines the amount of time before deactivating an output when the panel is reset. The range can be anywhere between 0 and 300 seconds. This works great if you need to stagger relays, switching back to a normal state. For instance, for air handler units, you could put them in separate zones, staggering the time for each unit in that zone, so when the panel is reset, all of the units will not start at the one time. Many times, all of the units starting at one time could cost the customer significant money because of the spike in energy needed to start all of the units at once. The rest of these characteristics refer to releasing. For more information on the releasing characteristics within zones, please refer to the PFC 6075R releasing panel training video. In order to add more zones to the programming software, right click on the current zones and it will allow you to add or delete zones. In this case I'm going to click add zones. I'm going to add 10 zones and once I click OK you will see that it will add those 10 zones to the zones list on the left hand side. You will notice that there is no plus sign next to zones 2 through 11. This is because there are no points assigned to these zones yet. For example, if you have general alarm highlighted, you will see the current points added to the zone in the lower middle window. Now if I click on zone 2, you will notice that this window is blank because there is currently no points assigned to zone 2. So going back to General Alarm, and I'm going to look at my points list for General Alarm now, down here in the center window. Expand this. Again, I ran a learn on my system, so all of these points were the points on my system when I ran a learn. I had previously adjusted all of the names and the functions in the Points tab in the programming software. I do not need or want all of these points in my General Alarm zone. I will need to remove some of them from this zone. So I'll need to go through this list again to decide what points will stay and which ones will go. So again starting with the general alarm we will go ahead and remove the points that are not needed for a general alarm such as the supervisory functions, the contact input tamper functions, and the duct detectors that are set up to be reported as a supervisory signal. And Again to do this you can just right click and remove selected points from zones. You can select multiple by left clicking, holding down the control key, and selecting all the points you wish to remove. 
and then right click and remove selected points from zones. After we have all these removed, the only things we will have left is our detectors or initiating devices that are going to initiate a general alarm signal. After we've set up the general alarm, we will now need to set up a supervisory zone. So now you would go to zone 2, double click, and then just type in there supervisory. With your supervisory zone, uh, ensure that you change the style to a supervisory style. And then now you can go over to your points list on the right hand side and choose all of your supervisory style inputs, such as your contact input tampers or your contact input supervisories. And again, you can select these single or you can select multiple and use click and drag over to the center screen. The only things you should be left with over here on the right hand side that are shown up as pink are your duct detectors and the relays and the shutdown for your duct detectors. So that concludes the programming of a supervisory zone. The next zones we're going to set up for are the air handler shutdown zones. So starting with zone 3, go ahead and double click on that. We're going to change the name to AHU1. Zone 4 will change the name to AHU2 and zone 5 will be changed to AHU3. Now click back on AHU1. We will now need to change the style of this uh, zone to a supervisory style. And Now over on the right hand side you can choose from your points list and drag over the AHU1 duct detector with the uh, relay built into it. Now that we're complete with AHU1 we'll select AHU2. We will select the duct detector with the built-in relay, drag it over to the middle screen, change the style of this zone to a supervisory style. And once that is complete, we can select AHU3. Again, drag and drop over that duct detector, change the style to a supervisory style. And once you have AHU3 complete, you can select multiple zones at one time to compare the zone characteristics. So in this case, we're going to select AHU3 hold down the control key, select AHU2 and AHU1. I'm going to expand this just so you can see all the zone characteristics. One thing you want to make sure of is for a, any zone that has a relay built into it is make sure you set it up to be a non-silenceable latching zone. The other thing we can do with these air handler units is set up the restore delay. So again, AHU1 will have a restore delay of 0, AHU2 may have a restore delay of 5 seconds, and AHU3 may have a restore delay of 10 seconds. For more training videos on Zones programming, please refer to the training videos such as Addressable Sounder-Based Programming, How to Program for Elevator Recall, How to Program for Fire Drill Zone, and How to Set Up a Supervisory Zone Programming. Thank you for watching the training video on Zones Programming. For more information, please contact Tech Support or myself at the email addresses or numbers shown on the screen.